What's going on so far in 2023 is you're seeing a reverse rotation out of the value-oriented stocks that did well in 2022 into the beaten down growth-oriented stocks that fell apart in 2022. Now, a lot of people are obviously betting that there's going to be a rebound in those names. Now, some of this could be short covering where people who were short those stocks want to flatten out and take profits. But I think other people are tempted to buy this dip. They're bottom picking. They think if we buy some of these really beaten down names, those are the names that are more likely to recover in 2023. But I think the fundamentals that were driving the rotation out of growth stocks into value stocks in 2022, those fundamentals aren't going to change in 2023. In fact, they're going to get even worse from the perspective of growth-oriented stocks. And so after this correction, I expect these growth names to roll over and make new lows sometime in 2023. In fact, I think early in 2023, these gains are going to be lost and these stocks are once again going to be sold because the rotation from growth to value didn't end in 2022. That's when it began. And I expect it to continue in 2023 because what's going on right now is investors are buying the lowest quality names. And I can't think of an asset of lower quality than Bitcoin. And so that's what's going on. In fact, if you look at the gain year to date in the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, it's up 47% so far in the year. So despite the fact that the parent company of the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust is about to declare bankruptcy and all the other problems that we're having in Bitcoin and crypto in general, speculators are still snapping up Bitcoin and shares of the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. Now, even though Bitcoin is up about 35% so far this year, it's barely made a dent in the 65% decline from last year. In fact, even at 22,500, Bitcoin remains close to 70% below the all-time record high that it set in late 2021. Now, the reason you're getting all this optimism in Bitcoin and a lot of their other assets is that investors are factoring in the Fed pivot. Most people expect the Fed to finish the tightening cycle sometime in the first half of the year. And in the back half of the year, they're anticipating that the Fed starts cutting interest rates. And it's this anticipation of the pivot that is driving this move back into speculative assets. But what the market doesn't understand about the pivot is that if we get it, it's not going to be because the Fed has been victorious in its battle against inflation, but because it has surrendered. And the reason it's going to surrender is because it's going to want to fight a different battle against recession and potentially a financial crisis, because we're not going to have a soft landing. We're going to have a hard landing and a hard landing with higher, not lower inflation is not bullish for growth stocks. It's bearish and it's not bullish for Bitcoin, it's even more bearish. So sometime soon, I expect markets to start reflecting this reality instead of the current fantasy. Now, one of the reasons that so many investors are expecting the Fed to pivot is all of the weak economic data that continues to come out. Google announced that it's laying off 12,000 workers. That's 6% of its entire staff. This is the largest round of job cuts ever in the history of the company. Now that follows an announcement from Microsoft that they were gonna be cutting about 10,000 jobs. Remember, late last year, we got about 18,000 job cuts coming from Amazon, I think 11,000 from Meta. I was talking about this all last year, not just late last year, but throughout the year I was warning that job cuts were coming in tech and they're still coming. This is not even close to the end of the layoffs. We're still near the beginning of what's going to be massive reduction in the workforce of these companies. And of course, some of the companies are going to see a 100% reduction in their workforce because they're going to end up going out of business. And all of this is going to add to the problems for the economy 
but also it's indicative of problems for these companies. Now, the initial reaction to the job cuts may be a boost in the stock price because the immediate effect is lower costs and so higher profits. But the reason these companies are laying off staff is because the business outlook for their goods and services is deteriorating. And so if the company is going to do less business, it needs less workers. But ultimately, the fact that it's doing less business means there's going to be lower profits. But it also means that the growth rate of those profits is coming down. And a lot of these tech stocks, of course, trade at high multiples. And those multiples are a function of two things, interest rates and growth rate. The lower the interest rate, the higher the stock price. The higher the growth rate, the higher the stock price. But we have two things happening. We have interest rates going up and growth rates coming down. That's a double whammy on valuations. And so after this sucker's rally ends in these tech stocks, look for the sector to make new lows. In the meantime, the laid off workers who have to replace the job they lost are most likely going to take a job that pays less than the one they had because these tech companies were among the highest paying jobs out there. And so workers are losing good full-time jobs, benefits high salary, and when they go into this weak labor market, they're likely to have to settle for one, two, or three lower paying, maybe full, maybe multiple part-time jobs without benefits to take their place. And they're going to end up with lower overall earnings, but they're having to spend more time to generate those earnings. And all of this is ultimately another negative for an already weak economy. And then today, we got a very weak report on existing home sales, even though the number was slightly better than estimates. It was still a weak number. The consensus was for 3.97 million homes to be sold during the month, and we actually sold 4.02 million. The prior month's 4.09 million was revised down slightly to 4.8 million, but the month-over-month -month decline was minus 1.5%, and that was an improvement over the upwardly revised minus 7.9% from the prior month. And the year-over-year -year decline was 34%. And that was an improvement, again, from the upwardly revised 35.5% decline year-over-year -year November. But since the 34% decline represents the entire calendar year 2022, it's even more significant because the 34% decline in home sales in 2022 represents the single largest drop in home sales ever, at least as long as they've been keeping track. Now, that is significant because that means the drop is bigger than it was during COVID. It's bigger than it was at any point during the 2008-2009 financial crisis, Great Depression. In fact, it's bigger than any year during the Great Depression if they were keeping track of the numbers back then. I'm not sure, but this is a very significant decline, and it also has very ominous implications for the economy in 2023 because a lot of economic activity that shows up in GDP is related to home sales and the turning over of homes. But to the extent that homes are not selling, people are staying put and they're not moving to another home, then that's likely to have a negative effect on GDP. So all those people that are still clinging to the false hope that the economy is going to experience a soft landing are not reading any of the very bold uppercase letters clearly written on this collapsing wall.